Hey everybody, it's Mark again. It's uh, 9.30 at night. I've been up for a while. But sometimes with my back issues, it takes several hours for me to feel like doing anything. And it's time for me to get off my lazy butt and work on a clock. And uh, I do have one of Seth Linkfelter's uh, shirt designs on and uh, I'll uh, talk about that later on in this video I'll add my commercial that talks about his shirts and uh, his designs but uh, we're gonna work on something a little different you know uh, I get tired of working on cuckoo clocks all the time even though I got several that are saying pick me pick me pick me get me out of this box and work on me that's a little humor, but uh, I've got several other clocks that I need to work on also. Uh, after my divorce, my clocks were in storage for at least five years, uh, both in a storage building and then in my house. And uh, you should service a clock every five years or so. And so... Uh, a lot of my clocks need servicing. I've been divorced now since uh, February the 8th of 2005. And uh, I've got a lot of my clocks that really need servicing, worked on. Well, anyway, uh, we're going to get started. So kick back, relax, grab something to eat, grab something to drink, grab a cigarette if you choose to do so. And so far, I've been uh, without a cigarette since, uh, um, sorry, May the uh, 27th was my last cigarette. And so hopefully I can continue on, but I'm gaining weight, so I need to do something about that too. But anyway, let's get started. Now this is a French black slate clock. And this clock was made around 1894. And the reason why I know that is because there's this tag right here on the front that says presented to presented by the nursery of St. John's House to Sir Hugh Behor. MD on his marriage June 29th 1894 it is extremely dirty it is extremely heavy and so um, we're gonna clean this up we're gonna take the movement out and uh, we're gonna get this thing running so uh, let's get started now the first thing I have to do is remove the hands. Now there should be a pen in the uh, uh, Minna Arbor center wheel, but there's not. So I should be able to just pull the Minna hand off unless there's a partial pen. which there's not so the minute hand comes off and the hour hand will come off and you will notice there's a knob right here and I'm not saying that this is the right key for it but typically there's an S and an F that's for slow and fast. If your clock's running too fast, you turn it to the S. If it's running too slow, you turn it to the F. Next thing we need to do is take out the movement. And by the way, this clock, the springs are still good as, as I can wind it but 
a lot of times when clocks sit around and they haven't been serviced, these springs will break on you. That's why they need to be serviced and that's why they need to run it's just like a car. Like I said, it's extremely dirty. I've had it in my floor. There's uh, two screws right here. And we'll talk about this later, but you remove these two screws and then the movement will slide out. But these screws are also used to put your clock in beat. Instead of um, adjusting the crutch, if your clock is out of beat just a little bit, you can loosen this and turn the dial, the movement, like so. And you can get your clock in beat. As you can see, the uh, the crutch assembly is moving back and forth. Put some more light on the situation. But if I was to turn the uh, movement, the crutch assembly will stop. So let me finish taking the screw out and we'll get back to you. Now both screws are out. It's missing the um, the material that would cover up these holes. And that's kind of the dead in the sound. It's not, it's a cloth material. You can still see it on here but it's poked away at the holes but that's the back cover here and you can see these arms where these screws connect to but now I got the screws undone I just pull the movement out and voila And I'm going to set the case off to the side. This clock weighs about 34 pounds. And I did work on this clock a little bit a while back. And I used um, some um, um, Gorilla Glue to um, put the plates back together and that's what this stuff is it's gorilla glue it seemed to work really good because the um, the plates were coming apart now I told you about that screw in the front that is to adjust the time actually when you turn this it's raising and lowering the the um, suspension spring. Let me see if I can do it so you can see it. Probably need to get a key to do that, but it's it's really dirty, so um, I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna have to, and this is a penned movement, and it is made by here it shows Paris, and here it shows A and N, and. I'm going to have to get out some magnification here to see what it says. Jappy Perez, and it shows a medallion. But I'm going to have to uh, 
look in my database to see when that medallion was issued. The next step I have to do is take the uh, the dial plate away from the movement. And I'm going to do that by taking these tapered pens out. And sometimes they could be a real pain in the butt to get out. I'm going to try a different one because once you get one out, you can maneuver it to get the others out. There's one. I'm going to try a different pair of pliers. A pair of vice grips. I got the second pin out. Now I need to get the third pin out here. Now this should lift straight off, which it does. And I'm gonna set this to the side. Now the next thing you wanna do is take the power off the clock. With all clocks, before you work on them, before you dis disassemble them, whether it's a weight-driven clock, or a spring driven clock is you have to remove the power and I'm just gonna find a key that fits and this key fits here's my letdown key here's the click you give it a little bit of a turn. You move the click out of the way and you let the letdown key slowly in your hand until you have no power whatsoever left. Doing the same thing to the other side. And that kind of got away from me because I went too fast. There's no power left on this clock. The next step that you'd want to do is take pictures all the way around. Front, rear, and all the sides. That way you could figure out how to put this thing back together. So that's what I'm going to do next. After you take your pictures, you have to determine what you want to do next. What I want to do is remove this suspension spring 
you watch my other videos, I'll tell you that I tend to always break a suspension spring every time I work on a clock. And so, uh, I want to get this suspension spring out of the way. Looking at it, it might still be usable. I might have to replace it. I'll probably end up breaking it as I'm working on this clock. The next step I'm going to do is remove this assembly right here. got a little bit of rust on it birch and crutch assembly can come off now this is an adjustable birch and crutch assembly but you see how it is loose I'm gonna have to try to tighten that up because you can't adjust it if it's loose like that so I'm gonna have to see if I can um, um, Tighten it up. Next step, I'm going to take the rack and snail assembly off. Tapered pins. Trying to do this over this camera is my issue. There we go, finally. And I did have a washer. And now I could take what's known as the rack off. It, um, in clock repair, it's what do you want to take off? There's no science to it. It's what do you want to do to take it apart? As long as you take the power off, that is the main issue. And this should have came off. There it goes. Oil. Oil. This right here is for the um, this this screw to adjust the uh, pendulum.
these screws right here that have the pivots in them you do not want to turn they're preset at the factory so don't take them off this nail the minute pipe Of course, the hour pipe is on the snail itself. And then this intermediate wheel. And you want to get a good idea of where these springs go. This first spring here is to activate the uh, gong lever. This other spring is to to make sure the third wheel with warning pin hits where it needs to go hit. This tapered pin here was just a nail that I, I'm sure I did it years ago when I first bought this clock. I bought this clock over in England at the uh, auction I told you about in other videos. Where I would go on Thursday nights, put in silent bids, and then if I want something, they would call me either Friday night or Saturday to tell me I won or didn't win. Time side ratchet assembly, strike side ratchet assembly. And my next step would be taking these pens out. Actually, I need to take the, uh, the, the hammer off. A lot of times these hammers get broken because of the design.
little push and it comes off. So I'm going to get out my beat here. Just clock beat and put on it. And so I could take the movement apart. So stand by. I also took the clicks off. I left the springs on. And the reason why I leave the springs on is because these things will break real easily. And um, I don't have any replacement springs on stock. So, uh, again, you do what you want. And I'm going to do what I want. Now to get these tapered pins out. And some of them can be a real pain to get out. And that's what I don't like about these feet. Is because they can come off on you pretty easily. I'm going to take these pins off, off camera so I can see. Taking them off, off camera, there was no struggling because I could see. And now, hopefully, when I lift up these plates, that all the parts stay in place. But if they don't, that's the reason why you have pictures. Voila. And now would be a good time to get another picture. And taking pictures all the way around again will help you out when you go to put this thing back together. There's the uh, fly. Which Go back over here to the uh, time side. You have the time side great wheel. I'm going to keep the time side separate. The second wheel. The escapement wheel and the wheel next to the escapement wheel and then on the strike side you have the great wheel the second wheel the wheel right here which has all the pins for that hits the uh, hammer The third wheel with warning pen, which doesn't come out. Sorry, this is the third wheel with warning pen. 
and then this wheel here has got the uh, P, the lever on the other side of it that doesn't want to come off just yet. I took those pins out. There we go. Now this comes out, and then this comes out, and then... This wheel right here has got a, a keeper on it, so it won't come out. And then the minute wheel was center arbor. And this will come off also. So now it's time to clean all these parts up. I've got my uh, ultrasonic cleaner on. I'm going to go ahead and take a uh, brush, a soft bristled brush, to the plates just to... Uh, clean off some of the excess junk that's on it. to both plates. And after it gets out of the cleaner, I'm gonna take a toothpick to every one of these pivot holes. So we'll come back. I hope you all are enjoying this video. Now I have another video specifically on taking a spring out of a barrel, how to clean it, and how to put, put it back in, and then oil it, and then put the cap on. This is time side. Here's the strike side. Now you could take and hit it like this on a piece of wood or you can take a tool and hit it like this and that will push the cap off also as long as it's not too bad. Sometimes you can't. take it off like that and see if I could pull it out the spring is broken and that's what happens when your clocks sit around too long so now I'm gonna have to order a spring for this barrel because I don't have one and again this is why you want to service your clock every five years or so that's why you want to wind your clocks all the time because as I explain in another video your clocks are kind of like a car if you don't start up your car every so often and lubricate the engine your engine when you finally do get it started the gas gets the seals everything's gonna leak 
you could break things and as you can see this spring is broken so um, I'm gonna have to order a spring and the way you order a spring is you measure the width the thickness and the length of the spring and make sure you get one for a barrel spring and not an open open clock spring I'm gonna go ahead and order two because if you look at this spring it looks pretty rusted also so I might as well just order two because I'm sure when I take this thing out it's gonna break also Hopefully it doesn't. That way I can measure the whole spring without... But see how bad that spring is? It's nice and rusty. Time for me to put on a glove in case the spring does shatter. I don't want to get hurt. I'm using the hook of this arbor to put it in the hole to pull the spring out. Most of the time, they don't want to come undone, so you have to twist them. But in this case, it doesn't want to come out. And once you get it part way out, you can unwind the spring from the barrel. And it broke also the very end so the clock definitely needed service a long time ago but that's what happens when you get way too many clocks in your collection and you don't take the time to um, service them properly. You see how rusted that thing is? The barrel's nice and rusted. Lack of oil. Lack of running. It has oil on the case. It's just the fact that over time, oil disappears. And that's what happened in this case. It has not been ran as it should. So, um, 
you get out your calipers. You measure the width. 21. 22 maybe. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the thickness. There we go. Point five, point seven, and then the length, and you have to take all this apart to measure the, stretch it out to measure the length. And as you can see, I always love these shirts. This is my 1880 Alexander Fleeg clock. That is the biggest cuckoo clock that I have. And it is a shirt designed with my inputs by Seth Linkfelter. It says, not for sale. It's my children's inheritance. What better way to show the love for your passion, to advertise your passion. I get people commenting on my shirt, shirts all the time. So uh, get with Seth Linkfelter. Let him design you a shirt from one of his, uh, uh, sorry, from one of your clocks that you love. Uh, you could buy this shirt and many other shirts on Redbubble. And I will leave a link in the description of this video. And leave a link to Seth's YouTube channel at the end of this video. If you do nothing else, uh, please hit the subscribe button to his YouTube channel. He is very professional. I wish my videos were as professional as Seth's videos. He doesn't put as many videos out as I do. And that's because he takes the time to edit, to create professional videos. He gives you the history of, of the clocks, as much history as he knows and can find. But his videos are extremely professional so make sure you hit the subscribe button to his youtube channel if you do if you even if you don't order a shirt or have seth design you a shirt at least hit the subscribe button and may god bless each and every one of you hopefully hopefully it doesn't blow up in my face as i'm trying to show you all this but here i got part of the spring spread out and I'm going to measure it we have 27 inches and so you measure the rest of it another 7 inches so 34 inches Here's my measurements, 34 inches in length, 21.8 millimeters wide, and 0.2 millimeters in thickness, give or take. And so I'm going to, I'm on time savers, and I'm going to search spring. And it's going to bring up 100 and, uh, okay, 313 searches. So now I just have to scroll through here until I find a spring that will fit this clock.
and this could take a while, so I'll be back. Here we uh, are looking at springs. Now we want a hole in spring, which is for barrels. Okay. We do not want a loop in spring such as this. This would be, sorry, this would be for like, uh, in this case, it's Asian made, but it'd be for like Korean clocks, American clocks, clocks that are not in a barrel, but this loop goes around the post of the plate. So we have to have a hold in spring. And we're working on a branch clock. Here it shows bits, many French clocks, but that's the only one it shows. But this thing's 54 inches. Remember, ours is only 34 inches, so I have to search for this thing to find me a spring that will fit my spring. And by the way, for this thing that says fits most French clocks, it's 11 16 inches wide, 0.14 millimeters thick, and ours is 21.8 millimeters wide. The thickness I could deal with 0.014, but the width I have to have something wider. And while I'm on Time Savers making an order, I might as well order more parts that I need. Um, remember, I was working on a, um, a uh, ship's bell clock, and it needs some, some click springs. And I've got other main springs that I have to order. So I might as well order all the parts that I need. And this video will consist of a two-part video at least. And again, this is why you want to service your clocks. And why you want to use your clocks. Because if you don't, things are going to break. They're not being lubricated. So you have to, um, you have to, um, um, lubricate the clocks. You have to wind the clocks. You have to use your clocks or things will break. Anyway, I hope you are enjoying this video. May God bless each and every one of you. One more thing that I wanted to point out. I made the length in inches, but I made the width in millimeters. So 21.8 millimeters. Or 22 is going to be... Nah. Figure out how to use this tool in a second. Stand by. It's going to be 0.86 inches in width. So far, the closest thing I found was. 14315 and find it again. It's three quarters of an inch by point zero one six of an inch by thirty eight inches long. And it's thirteen dollars and fifty cents a piece. So I'm gonna have to measure the length again 
to see if I could squeeze out four more inches. Because if it's too long, it's not going to fit in the barrel. Good thing I measured it again. I'm going to have to watch my video. must be a long day because I measured wrong. This long piece is approximately 40 inches. And the short piece is approximately 7 inches. So we're looking at approximately 47 inches. This long piece is actually 39 and 3 quarters of an inch. So, um, the length that I need is going to be around 47 inches. Uh, so, measure twice, cut once, I believe that is the uh, old saying. Because I have to order parts... I might as well go ahead and clean up the case. I took a vacuum cleaner to most of it. The uh, bottom base, if I remember correctly, had a wooden platform here. Obviously, it's not there anymore. But I'm going to use Old English Oil to clean up the case and a toothbrush another soft bristle brush and shine it all up and you'd be surprised what old english oil will do to this case you know it, it's starving for attention so um, I've been using old English oil for a very long time not only on wood parts but on other parts also and like I said it's extremely heavy As you can see, it's starting to get a shine. I guess you could take some car wax and wax it up, but we'll get there. You see what it looks like now? Wait until I'm done. Now the key to any clock repair is depending on your taste. I don't want a clock that was made in 1894 to look brand new. But I don't want it to look like it was made in 1894 either. It's kind of a, you clean it up to suit your taste. Now, I did take some uh, soap and water and a soft scrubby to this case and Old English oil. Now, you can see the nameplate. You can see the horses and chariot. And because these columns are brass, too, I did touch it up with a wire brush. But again, I don't want it to look brand new. That's why I didn't clean all the black off of this. I think it was originally spray painted black along with this. That's just, it was always like that ever since I bought this clock. But it's, it's considered a black slate clock. Black slate clocks were to recognize... A king of England's death and they were only made during a certain time frame I'm gonna to have to research that again I used to know it but it's hard to keep up with all my clocks but anyway 
old English oil, soap and water, and I did take some uh, semi-chrome to the plate and a wire brush to touch up everything else. And you can read the plate better. It's in small print, so I can't read it unless I look up close. So what do y'all think? Now, also the key to doing any clock repair, just like I tell you when you clean up a wooden case, it depends on how much time you want to spend. Old English oil to me is fast. It's easy on my hands. I've got Howard Beaton Wax. i got New Life Furniture Mask. I've got an Amish um, uh, uh, milk product. It, I could probably take some car wax to this and shine it up even more, but I don't want to. I'm happy with the way it looks. And... In my house is full of clutter and spiders and dirt because uh, my health issues, depending on where I put this clock, you can't set it on a on a, a glass table or anything. You got to set it on the floor for the most part. You can't if you put it on a shelf on the wall. That shelf has to be extremely heavy duty shelf because that thing weighs 34 pounds it is extremely heavy clock so i've always kept it on the floor and that's why it gets so dirty anyway um i hope you are liking this video and uh part two will be after i order some springs and get them in when that will be i don't know May God bless each and every one of you. One last thing. You need to keep all your parts together. Um, here I have all the hardware in this plastic bag. The space is fixing to go in that plastic bag. And it's going to go inside that case until I'm ready to work on it again. Along with my notes on my piece of paper of what I needed to order. I only order from Time Savers once or twice a year. And that's because I don't work on clocks for a living. If I worked on clocks for a living, I'd probably order from them once a month. but uh, or, or more. But... Because I don't, I don't make that many orders throughout the year. So I, I have a pretty good memory of what I need to order. And uh, so I kind of keep it all up, up in my head as what I need to order. I have another clock, well actually two more clocks that need springs. And so uh, when I make an order, I'll make the order for that. That's two clocks also.